Hello everybody, this is Jason Wang from Red Hat. Welcome to the KVM forum. Today I will give a talk about how VDP is support in the Linux kernel. Here is the outline. We will first go through the virtual IO architecture and then we will try to introduce a new type of device called VDP device. And after that, we will discuss the design and implementations of the VDP framework in the Linux kernel. And we will conclude the presentation and there will be a Q&A session. So here is the virtual architecture overview. So you can see that the virtual architecture could be split into three layers. In the upper layers, Virtual defines several different types of device. For example, it could be a networking device, SCSI device, block device, etc. In the middle is the core device model. It could be split into the definitions of the word queues, teacher bits, and the config space. And on the lower layer, it defines several transport, which ties to a device type to an actual bus. So the spec defines um, PCI transport, MML, and CCW transport. So several different types of virtual devices has been implemented in software. The first device implementation is done in QML, but its performance cannot satisfy our requirement. Then they move the data plane to the kernel by using the host protocol. It can do better than QML, but it's still not sufficient. So we offload the data plane from QML to another dedicated remote process through the VHOS user protocol. Then it can achieve the best performance that a software data plane can even achieve. So with the virtual specifications and the software implementations of virtual device, we get good application usability. We get a unified device interface for guests, and we even get live migration support. But there are still several drawbacks. The first is that the software implementations requires extra CPU cycles to be spent, and it requires extra management costs for settings such as CPU or memory affinity. And the last and probably most important one is that it can't reach the bare speed due to the software overhead. Consider the high, the community high light, high speed Ethernet and network card become available. In order to address all the limitations found in the software virtual implementations, some hardware vendors start to implement a hardware implementation for virtual, which means the device is fully compatible in both control paths and data paths with the virtual specification. Then it could reach bare speed and there will be no CPU overhead since all the data plane has been uploaded to the hardware. The unified API was preserved and there will be no vendor lock. But there are several issues of hardware virtual implementation. The first issue is that the current virtual is not designed to be virtualized. There's no API for save and restore device state in the current virtual specification. This means if you just expose raw virtual device to the guest, it can't be live migrated. The second issue is that virtual is thin and simple, which means it will be hard to be integrated with the existing hardware stack. So modern real hardware is much more complicated. For example, uh, the SRV capable Ethernet card is really have an embedded switch. This means the vendor may, may have their own specific API to config to program the switch. All of this API was missing in the virtual specification. And to be fully compatible in the control pass also means a redesign of the control pass, which tends to be a challenge. And it will be very hard to add vendor specific values, which really requires vendor specific extensions. And the manageability is also bad since there's no management API defined in the virtual specification. 
So in order to address all the limitations we found in the hardware hotel implementations, we introduced the concept of VDPA. So what is VDPA? It's short for we host data path accelerations originally. But then we realized we host is just a kind of fertile data path of flow. So we changed the definitions to the fertile data path acceleration. VDPA device is basically a kind of hardware that has a virtual compatible data bus, which is defined by the virtual spec, but it allows a vendor specific control pass. And it was required that such control pass should be functional equivalent or superset of the virtual control pass defined in the spec. In order to support live migrations, the VDP device is also required to have part of the word vhost features, such as device recovery or dirty page tracking. Note that the dirty page tracking is not a must. So from hardware perspective, VDP device is a functional superset of the virtual device. So it contains the vertices, the virtual features, vhost features, and vendor specific config method, which is functionally equivalent to the virtual config access. And beyond that, it was allowed to add render specific features on top. So why we need VDPA? You can see that we gain almost every advantage of the hardware virtual implementations. For example, it has a unified data pass with open standard, and it can reach wire speed. Besides those advantages, we also gain more. So we gain live migration support by supporting the host features like device state recovery. It was also a load vendor to add their add-on features on top. But if we just expose raw VDP device to the software, there could be still several gaps for the end-to-end -end delivery. For example, do we really want to expose all the complexity and difference of the raw VDP device to the upper layer? Or do we want to integrate the VDP device with the existing systems, or we prevent the view for a new dedicated subsystems? And also, how about manageability? Is there a vendor specific manage API, or it could be a unified one? And how about a heavyweight drivers or lightweight drivers? So in order to answer all of those questions or these comments, we want to introduce the VDP kernel framework. The main goal is to bridge the usability and the manageability gap with the raw VDP device. So it's basically a framework with the following features that is required. First, it should hide the complexity and difference of the underlayer device and present a simple same device API to the software. And it also try to present a unified managed API to simplify the task of the upper layer stack. And it will try its best to be integrated seamlessly with all the existing subsystems, which means it tries it will try its best to reuse the codes in both kernel and user space applications. And this framework should not be designed for user space drivers only. It should serve for both kernel and user space drivers. And the framework should be designed to be bus or device agnostics, which means it will allow any types of device, such as non-PCI device, FPGA device, or even software emulator device. And it will try to keep the drivers as lightweight as possible. So here's the overview of the VDP framework. So you can see that on the hardware level, there could be several types of VDP device, which is all connected to the VDP framework. And to the upper layers, it can choose to connect the VDP device to both VHOS systems and virtual drivers. So when connected to the VHOS subsystems, it will present a VHOS device and let applications to use a VHOS UAPI to control the device as if it was a VHOS device. And when connected to the virtual drivers, a kernel visible virtual interface will present to the kernel IO subsystems. So the applications can choose any of the virtual 
UAPI supported by the current RL subsidies to control the VHOST device, sorry, the VDP device as if they were virtual device. And the framework will also try to present a unified management API for the management applications. So as discussed, as discussed uh, the framework is tries to allow several different types of device and different types of drivers. So it's nature to consider to introduce the bus. So the VDP bus is the core concept for the VDP framework for abstracting the hardware, which allows different VDP device and drivers to be attached. And the VDP bus also defines the communication protocol between the bus driver and the device. So those communication protocol is a set of callbacks, which is called VDP config operations. And VDP device is the device abstractions provided by the VDP parent device driver, which have several common attributes of the VDP device and also the implementation of the VDP config operations. So on top of the VDP bus, several different types of VDP bus drivers were allowed to be attached. Those tasks is to uh, connect the VDP device to the existing kernel subsystems and then use the virtual, sorry, VDP config operations to talk with the VDP device. So you can see from the view of the VDP bus driver, you can only see the VDP device and the VDP config operations all the complexity and difference was highlighted via the VDP device abstraction and bus. So VDP device um, is for the common abstractions and VDP parent is the module that provides such abstractions. So it needs to provide the common attributes and in to implement the config operations of the VDP bus. So the config options usually contain several different uh, types. For example, it will contain the virtual specific operations, such as the word queue, uh, attribute setting, the device state, feature negotiation, and something, etc. Yeah. And it will also contain the interrupt and the doorbell acceleration method for fast access to the interrupt and doorbell. And in order to be more generic, it will also contain the DMA map and then map method, which could be very convenient for the device that has on chip MMU or have a sophisticated DMA mapping logic. And it will also contain the vhost operations for device state recovery and dirty page tracking. So the parent can be any type. For example, it could be a real parent device driver that talks to the VDP device directly, or it could be an intermediate layer on top of another device driver framework, or it could be even a software emulated VDP device or a proxy or relay of the VDP protocol to some other modules or even user space. So we allow several different types of VDP bus drivers to be attached. So we will first talk the vhost VDP bus driver. So this bus driver is used to present a vhost device to the vhost subsystems. So it serves mainly for the user space virtual drivers. For example, it could serve for QML vhost backend, for QML to present a virtual data path to VM, or it could serve for the DPDK virtual PMD, which serves for NFV use case. So the idea is trying to reuse as much vhost generic UPI as possible for the data path setting. But it also requires some dedicated UAPI extensions for full device abstractions, which is missed in the generic vhost UAPI. So those UAPI usually contains something like uh, config space access, state, device state get and set, config interrupt, etc. So the, the traditional vhost user applications only need very minimal changes. Then it can use the vhost VDP bus drivers to control the VDP device as if they were virtual device. 
The second bus driver we provide is the Vertel VDP bus driver. So its goal is to present a vehicle device to the Vertel bus. Then this pseudo or proxy Vertel device could be probed by the Vertel drivers. So the Vertel driver will be so the Vertel device will be visible to the kernel I/O subsystems. This is done by introducing a new VDP transport for the Vertel bus. Then the kernel I/O subsystems can use VDP device as if they were Vertel device. This means the applications can use, for example, TCP IP stack, storage stack, I/O XCP, or any kernel I/O systems to uh, transfer data between selves and the VDP device. The main use case for the Vertel VDP device is for bare metal applications or containerized applications. And for the management API, we will try to introduce a dedicated VDP-specific NetLink protocol for the VDP device management, which mainly con contains the first is uh, lifecycle management to create, destroy, enable, disable, and also to <coughs> setting the attributes or provision the VDP device. The idea is to introduce a new VDP programs that will be integrated into IP Route 2. And then the management API will use either these programs or the NetLink direct, uh, protocol directly for a unified configuration interface. All VDP device, pair device is required to implement the VDP NetLink protocol. So currently Linux kernel have supported three VDP parents. The first is the Intel FCVF. So from the hardware perspective, it addresses a virtual device plus Intel specific extensions. And the VDP is implemented through a dedicated VF. So its parent driver is simply a PCI VF device driver. The second VDP parent is the Manlox 5 VDP parent. So this device is also uh, implemented in a dedicated VF, but it has a total vendor specific control pass. Its parent is an intermediate layer on top of the existing Manlox file core module. And the third parent is the VDP simulator, which is basically used for uh, device testing, uh, feature prototyping, etc. So this parent is implemented purely through a software emulation. And we are working with vendors for more types of uh, VDP parents, such as the ADI, which complies the Intel scalable LV specification, or device or vendor specific device lights such as soft function, or even a PCIe endpoint device, which means the VDP is implemented via a remote SOC. So here's basically the status of the uh, VDP support in the current Linux kernel. So basic functions such as uh, VDP core bus drivers and three uh, VDP parents has been merged. And the basic QML function has been merged by QML. And then we are working on, for example, the NetLink based management API, which will be uh, post soon. And the live migration support is also under development. For live migration, we will prob probably start from a software assisted uh, live migration first. This means it doesn't require any device support for dirty page tracking. QML will try to assist the device for dirty page tracking. And after this, we will try to invent new API for supporting uh, dirty page tracking from the hardware. And you can see also the controlled queue work is being developed upstream. And we are working with vendors to make sure that the framework and the drivers can work for device other than networking we will probably start from the block device. And for the future, there are several things in our mind. The first is we will need to finalize the documentations in the kernel source, which contains both the VDP device API definitions and the host VDP UAPI. And we also plan to cooperate with 
the platform vendors to support share virtual address or even virtual shadow address. And we also plan to extend virtual specifications for some VDP specific extension. Okay, so let's conclude these presentations. First, we introduce a new type of device called VDP device. The VDP device has the virtual data pass with vendor specific control pass and VHOS features. And we introduce the VHOS framework in the Linux kernel, which tries to hide the difference and complexity of different types of VDP device and present a unified device and management API to the upper layer. The VDP framework contains the VDP bus and the device for abstracting the device. And we also allow different types of VDP bus drivers for connecting the VDP device to various kernel subsystems. So we support both vhost and virtual drivers to let the VDP device could be used by uh, both the kernel virtual drivers and user space virtual drivers. With the help of the both uh, VDP device and VDP framework, we could achieve wire speed virtual with the best usability and management ability. So there will be no vendor lock and there will be live migration support or even cross vendor live migration. A unified management interface was provided for ease the task of the management stack. And then we will get material software stack in both host and guests since we present virtual or we host device to the upper layer. So here are some good reference. First is the presentation done by Steve in the previous uh, KVM forum. And the second is two series of blog wrote by us, which contains almost every aspect of both Vertel and VDPA. And it also contains several deep dive for the VDPA kernel framework and its the typical use case. So you are welcome to go through those blog series and give us feedback. And it's also be useful for review and have a look at what health specification. And if you want to ask or hear from what is recently being developed for VDP aspect, you are welcome to subscribe the VDP development mailing list. So VDP has come to real life. It's not a concept in the paper. You are welcome to consider to deployment the VDP device in your cloud, or you want VDP-based hardware. And you are also welcome to test and contribute to the VDP framework. Please contact us if you have any questions. For example, the hardware uh, design, driver implementation, deploy, integration, and management issues, or even feature requests. You can drop a mail to either the virtual networking mailing list or a private mail to me. That's it. Thanks.